Thank you for joining us now. I am Franco Malape. President Bolatinovo has said that the hardship being faced by Nigerians in the aftermath of the few subsidy removal will be addressed. He said the government will do this with massive investment in transportation infrastructure, education, regular power supply, healthcare, and other public utilities that will improve the quality of life. On May 29, I give effect to the decision taken by my predecessor in office to remove the fuel subsidy, the abatros and the free up the collective use of much needed resources, which had hitherto been pocketed by a few rich. I admit the decision we impose extra body on the masses of our people. I feel your pain. This is one decision we must bear to save our country from going under and take our resources away from the stranglehold of a few unpatriotic elements. The government I lead we repay you through massive investment in transportation, infrastructure, education, regular power supply, healthcare, and other public utilities that will improve the quality of lives. The democracy MK Abiola died for is one that promotes the welfare of the people over personal interests of the ruling class. Meanwhile, President Tinubu acknowledged the winner of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, Chief MK Abiola. He described a late businessman who died in suspicious circumstances after his election was annulled by the late General Sani Abacha as a symbol of Nigeria's democracy. The unjust annulment of a widely acknowledged free and fair election was a challenge that elicited resistance by a resurgent civil society, leading ultimately to the attainment of our second independence, as exemplified by the return of democratic governance in 1999. Fellow compatriots, we celebrate a day that has remained a watershed in our nation's history, not just today, but for every June 12th, for the endless future that our beloved country shall exist and work stronger and stronger. And now, today, June 12, is exactly 30 years since Nigerians went to the polls to elect a new president in the Third Republic of the country's democratic journey. That presidential election was the first since the 1983 military coup that swept away the Second Republic's politicians. It was, however, another botched effort, but the legacy of the man whose charisma brought a new twist to the nation's border polity is again being celebrated on this day. Our correspondent, Dennis Ofik, takes a look at this. Today, June 12, is exactly 30 years that Nigerians went to the polls to elect a new president in the Third Republic of the country's democratic journey. That presidential election was the first since the 1983 military coup that swept away the Second Republic's politicians. It was, however, another botched effort by the legacy of the man whose charisma brought a new twist to a body polity is again being celebrated. Assuming there was good faith on the part of government, all matters relating to the election should have gone to the tribunal set up by law for such cases and should only have been initiated by persons or bodies that had genuine interest in the election. June 12, 1993 was the day Nigerians trooped out in their millions to elect their president after years of military rule. It was adjudged the first and first election in Nigeria's history. 
The voting was devoid of tribal, religious and sectional sentiments. The Social Democratic Party's presidential candidate, Chief Moshud Abiola, and his running mate, Babagana Kingibe, were widely believed to have won the election despite their Muslim-Muslim tickets. Nigerians eagerly awaited the result of the exercise, but they were rudely shocked when the then military president, Ibrahim Babangida, annulled the election. There were protests which led to the killing of many pro-democracy activists and other Nigerians by security agents. It led to the relocation of many citizens across the country. Before Babangida was forced to leave office, he handed over to an interim government headed by Chief Ernest Shoneko. This hurried arrangement did not last as the late General Sani Abacha shoved Shoneko aside and took over power. In 1994, Abiola declared himself president. The government then accused him of treason, arrested and jailed him. Abacha and Abiola later died in June and July 1998 respectively in controversial circumstances. General Abdusalami Abubakar, who took over from Abacha, conducted elections and handed over to Chief Olushe Gwobasonjo on May 29, 1999. Since then, Nigeria's democracy has not witnessed any military interruption. I, Mosul, Kashima, Wala, Wale, Abiola, should be penalized for his conduct. Transiting from one civilian government to the other since 1999 without military interventions is one of the benefits of the June 12th struggle. Nigeria has celebrated Democracy Day every May 29 until 2019 when President Muhammad Buhari signed the law making June 12 Nigeria's new Democracy Day. Something is wrong in this, in this country. Something is going wrong because we are not being attended to. Gov I mean, the government of Tinumbu, although it's ready to help, to, to run the country, but this is not the way and this is not the type of set of people. These are our people in Nigeria. We are the ones following this country by ourselves, not the government. We should all put an effort to make this country be a great country. Many past government, supposed, at least they supposed to have uh, stopped, they put an end to the fuel subsidy. But now, uh, I don't know what is happening to, to, to other, maybe they are, they, most of the uh, past uh, president, they, they are, they, may, maybe they have some kind of fear. Another outcome of this democracy is that in 2015, an incumbent president, good luck, Jonathan, lost in a general election for the first time and considered defeat. But for occasional breaches by some overzealous security agents, Nigerians have also enjoyed freedom of speech more than what was obtainable under the military. Nevertheless, true democracy is still a far cry in Nigeria. The significance of June 12 will be lost if the country's system of democracy does not meet its aspirations. And in the meantime, Nigeria is today observing its fifth anniversary of the change of the country's Democracy Day from what could be de deemed as an unpopular date of May 29th to June 12th, championed by an election deemed to be the fairest election ever conducted in the country. No doubt the credit for the reversal goes to the immediate past federal government led by President Muhammadu Buhari following the nod of the immediate past National Assembly and on the behest of the Democrats within and outside Nigeria. Captured in this report are comments and reactions made by Nigerians on the effort made by some past administrations over the years to get the date, May 29, thrown out of the window. Nigeria's democracy has continued to elicite mixed reactions over how previous administrations refused to place in proper perspective what could be a threat to democracy as we ought to know it. Ibran TV's Sam Okata brings us this report. Nigeria is today observing its fourth anniversary of the change of the country's Democracy Day from what could be deemed as an unpopular date of May 29th to June 12th, championed by an election deemed to be the fairest election ever conducted in the country. No doubt, the credit for the reversal goes to the immediate past federal government led by President Muhammad Buhari 
the sequel to the node of the immediate past National Assembly and the behest of Democrat within and outside Nigeria. Captured in this report are comments and reactions made by Nigerians on the efforts made by some past administrations over the years to get the date May 29 thrown out of the window. If you have a constitution which allows uh, uh, um, money to be stolen and when money is stolen, they return some, they do what to call plea bargain. This will not help democracy. Now that we have a politician, like a politician as the president of this country, I believe the politics, the politicking in this country should change. I believe that we should have a, a better political system. Like the things that are supposed to happen in politics should not happen. The one that we are experiencing will be a good one, as we have experienced in the past. I know God is going to intervene in Nigeria and everything that we, we are expecting will come true in the name of Jesus. Our legal system is structured or our justice system is structured along that line. You know, you can see somebody, you know, that, that probably, probably caught in a, in a crime, you know, that will call lead to. Probably somebody, you know, that still, you know, is such a you know, poor water, for instance. The way the process, you know, of justice is structured, everything will be fast. Compare, you know, to people, you know, you know like the National Annual Assembly, people, you know, that are really into big fraud. It's been delayed. To me, everything presently is still, still okay. But it may not be hundred percent as um, as expected, but you know we are still managing, we are still coping, and we are praying that you know as times goes on, we things will get better. Nigeria's democracy has continued to elicit mixed reactions over how previous administration has placed in a proper perspective posed what could be a threat to democracy as we ought to know it. As Nigerians bear their minds on the nation's democratic journey so far and how it has been a curse rather than a blessing, here are their hopes going forward. Democracy ought to be about the people, not about a group, region or ethnicity. So going forward, Nigerians expect the government will eventually fulfill their dreams.